So do you want to know what one of life's greatest gifts is? I think the answer might actually surprise you. Now I'm going to get to that. But first, let's talk about the seventh chapter of the book of First Corinthians. In our very first session uh, of this series, I talked about how there are these dual themes in the letter of Corinthians. Uh, you have this theme of love and this theme of control about how what looks like restriction to one person can actually be a great big act of love to another. Here's a great example. I always tell my children since they were little that they have to wear helmets when they ride their bikes down the street. And they don't always want to. Sometimes they think it's unnecessary. They think that I'm trying to control them by making them put this helmet on. But for me, it's because I love them. I love them so much I want to see and make sure that they don't get a concussion or anything worse. We see this theme of love and control back here in the chapter in, in chapter 7 of 1 Corinthians. Now, Paul, Paul's been coaching this young church on how to be the church together, and they have so many questions. And a lot of these questions revolve around sex, sexuality, and marriage. Remember that their little town of Corinth, it was kind of a bigger town of that day. There's this temple to the goddess Aphrodite, so sex is kind of all over this city. It is sin city, as we might call it today. And it's known for prostitution. So it's no wonder that Paul spends so much time talking about sex and sexuality here in this book. Uh, uh, but Paul, what he's doing, it may sound like control, but he's actually seeking to protect them. At the end of chapter 7, Paul is trying to help the church release its anxieties around marriage and sex, around who should be married and who shouldn't be married. He's telling them, again, he said, grow exactly where you are. Use the gifts and the vocations that you have right now in order to glorify God. And then he also says, use those relationships. If you're married, stay married. If you're single, stay single. There, But there's something I don't want you to miss. Uh, in verse 26, Paul writes this thing that I think uh, gives us a little clue into where Paul's mind's at. In verse 26, Paul writes, I think that in view of the impending crisis, it is well for you to remain as you are. In view of the impending crisis, so then it leads us to ask, what impending crisis is Paul sort of referring to about that? You see, what Paul is thinking about, it thinks that the second coming of Jesus is imminent. Like it's right around the corner. Like in just a second, the whole world is going to be changed. You see, when Paul has been walking around and he's preaching and he's doing all his missionary journeys, he's doing it with like a kind of existential urgency. He's looking at those churches and he's saying, yo, you stay married if you're married. You stay single, you single. And both of you, you just do it well. Uh, but if you are having a problem controlling yourself, then go ahead and get married because there's no use screwing up your life and others. You see, Paul has this urgency to change people's lives for good, to get them to live life in a good way. And he wants them to keep watch because he believes that Jesus returning is just right around the corner. So do you want to know what one of life's greatest gifts is? It's actually that. It's existential urgency. It's knowing that our time here is limited. That's it. We're mortal. We will have this time end. So how do we make the most of it? I think what we do is we double down on where we're at instead of waiting for something else to come along and happen. We care for others in the here and now, and we live in the spirit as Paul invites us to at the end of this chapter. So here's your questions for today for you to think about, talk about, or journal about. How does knowing uh, that your time is limited actually change how you live your life? How does knowing that your time is limited change what you do today? And number two, uh, where in your life do you feel like you have an existential urgency? Is it spending time with somebody you love? Is it sharing the good news of Jesus with somebody? What is it that uh, creates that feeling of existential urgency in your life? It's one of life's greatest gifts. See you soon.